is of course uh, just the other way around as you would expect in a gauge theory. And you get only field equations of first order, which is, if you recall, if you express uh, Maxwell's theory in terms of the potentials, then of course you get typically uh, a wave equations uh, for, uh, uh, for the potential, but here we get only first order equations. So this is a degenerate in any case. So that's a degenerate. Degenerate on the point of view of the, uh, from the point of view of the potential theory. So what you want to do is, of course, and the remedy is, of course, gauge field theory. So what you uh, want, uh, you want a remedy, and the remedy is, of course, simple. You have to, torsion cannot enter linearly in, into the Lagrangian because torsion carries one index. It's a two-form, and if you want to kill this one index, uh, you need a, 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 a well, one index, and you need a three-form. The only three-form which is available leads, uh, which is uh, would, would be um, with theta alpha, which is by definition E alpha in theta. This is a three-form, but it uh, uh, doesn't uh, uh, lead to a, to a consistent uh, framework. Uh, uh, this term alone. Um, Yes, I'm now caught. Uh, I have an argument against this term, but I forget it now. Okay, that's the only thing. No, it, it's wrong what I said. What I said is wrong. T is a two form. And in order to kill uh, this one index, I need a uh, um, three form with one index. Uh, um, a two form with one index, but this is a three form. So it doesn't work. So torsion is a two form. I need another two form which has one index and there is none available. Period. So torsion can only enter quadratically, like in the Young Mills theory, and curvature can only uh, can enter linearly, like here, plus quadratic uh, pieces are not forbidden, of course. So the, uh, it, it's quite clear that we have um, 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 then we turn to, to quadratic pieces in the Lagrangian in order to remedy this degenerate character. I mean, einstein pattern theory will always be some limit because it has general relativity as a limit and we you know this is macroscopically a very good theory. So it, it always plays some role, but it's degenerate from a gauge theory point of view. So really nearly we have to add quadratic pieces in order to get a proper gauge field theory. This is uh, uh, the argument. Now, from Young Mills theory, you know I'm always appealing to Young Mills because we are talking about gauge theories. And a lot of people nowadays talk about gauging and usually forget the structures which Young, Mill, Young Mills laid down, like uh, that uh, we have quadratic Lagrangians and that we have a current which, which is the iso uh, spin in, in uh, conserved iso spin. And, and the potential coupled to the conserved isospin. And, and, and the Lagrangian is always of the type F rich star N, right? And of course you can, um, so these are the quadratic, this is Jan Mills theory. Of course in Jan Mills theory you could also add, we will talk a little bit about this later on, you could also add terms like F which F, but they have a different parity uh, behavior because there is no star involved. You know, in this I argued already in the einstein kaufmann Lagrangian where I dismissed this Lagrangian which has no, uh, no star in it. And also it's, it's, a, it's a surface term which I will kind of, uh, uh, go into. I mean in Maxwell's theory it's, it's quite simple, Maxwell is also, I, I always use uh, the same symbol, so it may be a little bit confusing. Maxwell Lagrangian is F which star. Of course, here in Young Mills theory, you have here an index 
have well, SU2, and in Maxwell theory you have no index because it's only U1, so you, you have only a, 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 a one number which you don't need, and here you have, uh, depending on the uh, dimension of the group, um, uh, an index which runs over the dimensions of the group, which is in the case of SU2, not just uh, from one to three, it's three dimensional. Uh, and in Maxwell's theory, you also have a term, and, and here we see it very, very uh, nicely, F wedge F, but we know that F is, of course, wedge is, is the uh, exterior derivative of A, and if we partially integrate, we get, um, we get D of um, F, which A, right, plus uh, we get DF. I mean, if you apply this D to, D, uh, to F, uh, uh, the Leibniz rule, D of F is zero because of the homogeneous Maxwell equation. So this is, and the second piece is just the piece we have here. So in, in Maxwell's theory, this is just a surface term, and you can forget it, I mean, unless you are interested in certain topological effects or so. Of course, what you can do, and this is what Plato needed uh, 1973 or even earlier, uh, you can add here a scalar field or pseudo-scalar field, which is called the axiom field, alpha of x. And then, of course, uh, you, you no longer have a, you have here a, a alpha, which depends on x, and then this is no longer a surface term, and this is the axiom, and then you can make a theory of this axiom. So this is a possibility to make this term even very useful. I'm, I'm not discussing it here, but just want to point, point it out that this is the type. So, and in, 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 in young mills theory, you can have a, a similar arguments. Now, uh, <coughs> Okay, so if we take Jan Mills theory as a lead, then what we want to add is torsion squares, torsion um, alpha, which watch of torsion alpha, alpha downstairs, because we have to sum. And we want to have terms of R, alpha beta, which star. Uh, alpha beta. I hope you um, agree that this is totally <coughs> analogous to what we, uh, what we do here in, in Young Mills theory. <coughs> so we do nothing what has not uh, good tradition. Now, of course, now you have to think it over, and um, if you have such a term, then you know, and this is a difference. In Young Mills theory, you cannot decompose these field strengths irreducibly. It is irreducible already, so this is the only term you can have. But this is different. You have the indices, and you can decompose it irreducibly. So you, what you can write is the sum, sum over i <coughs> from i equals one to three of i um, t alpha which and the sum goes here, right? which the star of sum over k equals one, two, three of um, p alpha k. Um, okay, you, you expand it, you get three pieces here and three pieces here, it's a sum, and you multiply it, and then you can prove, and this works, for here and also for the curvature, that what is left over is just a T1 T1 alpha which star what star T1 alpha downstairs plus T2 uh, T alpha which star um, T2 
two alpha downstairs plus the third piece. So you get only diagonal pieces. So T1 times T, uh, T2, start T2 cancels. They are orthogonal uh, in a way. You can, you can group that. So what is left over are just three pieces. This, this, and the third one. And exactly the same happens for the curvature. So instead of, um, I don't know how many pieces, you just get six pieces. They always have one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six. And this is then the Lagrangian uh, uh, which we uh, have to discuss. Now I went out of all of here. Okay, and if you, no, it's, this is exactly what I wanted to say, yes, in this order. And what I wanted then to say is that if you do that, you get quadratic Lagrangians, and then you get the left hand side, left hand side of first, you get exactly like in, in, um, in this, and I call this theory, the quadratic Poincare gauge theory because we have now quadratic pieces. Of course, if the quadratic is a linear piece of art, quadratic PG, you have the left hand side and if, if, if the first equation depends, of course, on the derivative of the torsion. And the torsion is the uh, first derivative in, in the uh, co frame, and uh, this derivative gives the second derivative of the co frame. So what you get is the second derivative of the theta, um, first derivatives of the theta, first derivative of the gamma, and uh, theta gamma. This is the left hand side, and this is proportional um, to some gravitational constant, and the left hand side of the second field equation, if we have such Lagrangians of the quadratic PG is um, second derivative of the connection, um, first derivatives of the connection, first derivatives of the co-frame, the co-frame and the connection is proportional to a new coupling constant rho as alpha beta because in the quadratic curvature piece we have new coupling constants. So the degeneracy is lifted and this is exactly, then we get uh, wave equations typically in leading order, wave equations for theta plus other terms proportional to kappa times uh, the, uh, times the energy momentum and wave equation, wave operator linear approximation of the, the highest derivative. Um, um, quadratic Lagrangians lead always, like in Maxwell's and Young Mills theory, to linearity in the highest order. So in, they are linear in the second order. This is called quasi linear differential equation. So these are quasi linear differential equations, so you get always a box here. And this is proportional to enough new coupling constant times S alpha beta. So uh, I hope to, to have uh, shown that these quadratic Lagrangians then lead to a, a, a full fledged page theory uh, like we know it from, uh, uh, from uh, the Mills theory, uh, and the terms are typically of this kind. Now, I insert it here now uh, since um, Professor Gang is today not here, but some of his students may be around. Uh, he has uh, written at least three papers about translational uh, or teleparallelism uh, uh, gauge theory of gravity, and I uh, will make a few remarks and will uh, compare this uh, theory this Maxwell's theory in order um, to give some more insight in this uh, translational case theory. So, uh, 
And of course, it's in the subject. Because I told you, we have to add torsion squares and we have to add curvature squares. Now, I'm concentrating on torsion squares. But uh, as we immediately will see, this only makes uh, definite sense if we do it in a Weizenberg space time where the curvature vanishes. So section 5, 6, which is insertion, insertion for translational gauge theory, translational gauge theory, translational gauge theory, which is also called teleparallelism, <coughs> teleparallelism, teleparallelism. As another degenerate case, it's also degenerate, as I will point out, as, an, as another degenerate, degenerate, degenerate. Okay, so we had already one degenerate case, the einstein pattern theory. Now we get uh, to the uh, second one. Uh, Okay, what, what is, uh, let us look at, at the field equations. And let us assume that we only gauge translations. Uh, then we don't get a Lorentz field strength, so all terms with the curvature drop out. So this drops out, and this drops out. And what is left over are these pieces. But in order to uh, make a consistent theory, we have to uh, require that then the curvature vanishes. It not only drops out, but it has to vanish. So in order to make it a consistent theory, we should uh, consider a Lagrangian, a total Lagrangian, which is um, the translational piece where uh, the gravitational Lagrangian depends only on, well, on, on C, uh, it, uh, on theta alpha, on torsion alpha. Now I will kill the curvature by a Lagrange multiplier. So I still uh, keep the, uh, the curvature in order to make it consistent. I will work with a Lagrange multiplier plus the metal Lagrangian. And now I add an, um, a Lagrange multiplier with a certain factor, 1 over 2 kappa, which is a, a, a dimensionless cutting constant, times lambda. These are the Lagrange multiplier, two forms, alpha, beta, which are alpha, beta. So this is a consistent way of uh, Formulating a translational gauge theory. Um, okay, the reasons I gave already. If you do that, you find just a few equations. You can easily, uh, I mean, if you vary with respect to the uh, connection, you get a piece here. But if you vary with respect to, uh, uh, you can consider that as a metal Lagrangian and then just fill in here, and so you get the following field equations of the consequence, this is a, you get E H alpha minus E alpha in V, where V is now a little plus uh, E alpha in T beta, H H beta, is equal to the energy momentum tensor. And you get a second field equation, one over two rho times E lambda alpha theta plus theta alpha h h beta anti-symmetric is equal to the spin Okay, but now I can, I can see the following. Uh, I can solve this equation as a differential equation 
was a Lagrangian multiplier and can determine the Lagrangian multiplier, but in this equation, the Lagrangian multiplier doesn't appear. So I can just forget uh, this Lagrangian multiplier, take here the Lagrangian that uh, put r equal to zero, and uh, the whole field equation which is left over is just the equation which I, and this is the equation most people start with if they uh, uh, discuss a uh, gravitational Lagrangian, a telepathic theory of gravity. Hi, Brad. There is a sine problem here because of the division of edge with minus sine. Sorry? The division of edge has minus sine. No, oh, it's only a minus sign if I have here this variation of uh, derivative. Yeah, then the so there is minus and there is a plus. This is, this is correct, isn't it? Well, actually, it's minus sign. The definition of edge. Differential of h is minus this. Yes, so okay. this minus stays. And I have here a problem. Here? No, 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 no. The first line. The first line. The here? Yeah. Left. 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 Could you come to the left one, please? I think you are right. Set. 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 This What was it? Yes. This is true. Okay. If I put here the h, I get here a minus. But here I keep the h, so I have the original signs which I have in this equation. And this is just this and, and, and this. And, uh, the second term in the bracket, the second term in the bracket, is here you try h beta. Okay, I think it's correct, but perhaps we can explain it at the end of uh, when you had. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you check these equations. I mean, uh, I think it's correct, but maybe I'm wrong, you know, maybe I overlooked something. Um, it's not so, well, it may be relevant, but I think. Uh, also in my manuscript, it's this way. Okay, this is a quasi, um, this is a quasi uh, Maxwellian form. Um, and I want to introduce now, so if you, this is the field equation of teleparallelism. Field equation of teleparallelism. Incidentally, this field equation was proposed by the 1979 already. And usually people now get other sources. Um, um, and if we want to have the equivalent to Einstein's equation, one can show that H alpha, and now perhaps you get your minus sign back, is 1 over 2 kappa, which is a gravitational constant, times minus the first piece of the torsion, P alpha, plus 2 times the second irreducible piece of the torsion, this is the vector piece of the torsion, uh, minus the uh, plus one half over the third piece, which is the axial torsion. This is uh, leads to what is called the GR teleparallel. So this, the corresponding Lagrangian is locally Lorentz invariant. The only uh, uh, Lagrangian, which is locally Lorentz invariant in this teleparallelism uh, uh, cage field theory, is this one. Uh, so the Einstein type of Lagrangian is distinguished by the uh, uh, presence of a local. So, so may I ask a question? Is, is this also, uh, I mean, Shirafuji, uh, Hayashi and Shirafuji, yes, also is, is, is theirs the same as yours? Oh. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Okay, Not exactly that, you can use like Walsh multiplier. But so there is, this is, say. yes, this is basically okay, the same. Yes, it's okay. the same. It's also 1979, I think, I actually... No, same, same time. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I mean, we gave a lecture on which was a little bit earlier, but this is a, a okay. more decisive 
they gave uh, the same type of theory. But Hayashi and Shirato, Shirato. I mean, I gave these names all in, in our book, you know. So Hayashi, Kenny Hayashi, and Hachi Shirato. Yeah, from Saitama University. Shirakuchi is now it's Saitama University. Um, okay, so what was it? Okay, now uh, I want to uh, insert uh, a section for which was uh, for people like Professor King. Uh, they investigate what they call F of T, not Martian theories. F of T theories. So what they assume, there is a lot of literature, there is a whole book on that, um, which is not always very, uh, very uh, clearly visible what, what's going on. So I hope uh, that I can clear up what is going on. But what they do is instead of the V, which we took, which is quadratic in torsion. And this quadratic torsion piece in the Lagrangian, they call the torsion scalar. So um, what we usually use is sort of this uh, uh, torsion scalar, they call it torsion scalar. It's, it's their language, it's not my, my language, which is uh, proportional to uh, really torsion square. Right. This is uh, because if H alpha is T, so the Lagrangian is always proportional H alpha which T alpha, right? And uh, the H alpha is here linear in torsion times T alpha, so you get a quadratic torsion piece. And this piece, this piece, this is uh, they call the torsion scale. A very unfortunate language, but it's in the literature. And what they then do is to um, uh, to generalize this theory by using an arbitrary function of this torsion scale. Now, in, in my formalism, uh, this would be that instead of the four-form B, I take the four-form F, which depends on the torsion scale at some arbitrary. Right. And uh, but uh, and we use uh, since we are in a Weizenberg space time with vanishing curvature, we can always use a gauge that the torch, uh, that the connection at one point is equal to zero. No, not at one point. Everywhere, because it's a flat space. I'm sorry. This, but this is a gauge. So this is called a gauge. Okay. And then I can just take my field equations and instead of V, I now take a T and I can rewrite my field equations in terms of this T. And that is what these people are doing. So let me just, uh, the first field equation is then. First field equation is then the ich sehe derivative of now I apply the chain rule E F, which is the Lagrangian four form, partial derivative with respect to the torsion scalar times partial derivative of the torsion scalar with respect to the torsion. Alpha. So a lot of it, a lot of T's now, but I hope you can decipher it. Minus E 